thing, we're excited that you're all here, so many of you, both here and also in the overflow. It's just tremendous to see all these excited faces. We have a great show for you. We hope. We hope, yep. <laughs> and so we should start with a, a bang. Right. So are you ready for a bang? So one of the things that we get to do, one of the uh, things we get to do in this show is you just saw that and heard that, and that was very fast. But we're going to get to show that to you in slow motion using our very fast cameras. And so, Nicole, will you uh, show that? This is what you just saw. Look how the balloon first retracts, and now the chemistry kicks in. Isn't that beautiful? And then it comes back together again. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so we have a fantastic camera team right here, Nicole and Andre. And so uh, one of the themes uh, that we'll see in this uh, uh, talk is transportation. And one of the things about transportation is that uh, we have airplanes. And airplanes get kept in the air by a number of different things. But one particularly uh, important part of the physics is what's called the Bernoulli effect, which is when the get, uh, air goes very rapidly over something, the pressure goes down. And so it's kept in the air if the, if the uh, air above the wing is faster than below it. And so we can see that by blowing on a sheet of paper. So my mouth is above the sheet of paper, and I'm going to blow on it. And you see that if I blow very quickly, then you can see this paper rise into the flow rather than being blown out of the flow, which is what you might have expected. It's what you get in uh, your shower when you have the water coming down around you, and the water gets fast, and then the shower curtains come around and, and give you that beautiful, wonderful hug. OK, so that's what you get there. Now, Sid, this, this is OK, but it's just a little piece of paper and a little bit of blowing over it. We should crank that up a little you bit. You mean right? industrial strength? Yes, I mean industrial, industrial strength. strength. OK, okay. <laughs> so this is industrial strength. OK, so we're going to try this with industrial strength. And so here is a big piece of paper. Here is a big mouth. And now I'm going to, uh, clearly, the mouth is above the sheet of paper. And now I'm going to turn this on. And you can see that blowing above the sheet of paper, the paper rises into the flow rather than being pushed away. So is there anything else we can do with that, Heinrich? I don't know. Should we do something else? Yeah. OK. How about other kinds of paper? How OK. About, how about this kind Are of paper? Are you ready? That was loud. And now we ask everybody to be to be real quiet. So what we want to I, I want to ask how many of you play a musical instrument? 
Oh, oh a lot of you play musical instruments. And one of the things that uh, they teach you, isn't it, that you're supposed to keep time. If you don't keep time, whoops, uh, you, uh, you lose the rhythm, and, and that's no good. And so you really want to know what your rhythm is and keep time. And so they give you these things called metronomes, which uh, are supposed to click, 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 click in time. And so if you have one metronome, that's good, but two could be better, right? And three, even better, four, five metronomes. And that's not better. That's a mess. I can't tell what the rhythm is. It's all over the place. So how do I figure out what the, how to get this back onto track is we take this and we put this on a pair of rollers. Rollers. Just a sec. I call that a success. All right. So that was something about sound and rhythm. And we keep with that theme a little bit, but it is also holiday time, right, coming up. So we want to make it a little bit festive. And so what we are going to do now is to dim the lights and turn on an instrument that plays with flames. OK, so are we ready? OK, so now we have a, uh, what we have here is a uh, tube in which gas is flowing. The hydrogen just turned on the gas. is flowing through this tube. And it has a bunch of holes in it. And the, the, we've lit the top of the holes. And so you can see the gas coming out of these holes. And they're all forming this nice little row of flames that are coming out of here. And so what we would like to do is see something more about the sound that we just heard over there. Can we use sound in a different way? And so what we thought is, if you put a sound on one end of this pipe, and then you can see it go down the pipe and come back, and you will have waves. And so we've triggered this so there's a speaker here, and we're going to send a tone through there and see what happens. Cool, right? Look, you can see where the uh, sound waves are by seeing how high these flames are in these different places. So it goes. So you can see these things changing with the sound. All right. Is there a birthday? Anybody have a birthday birthday today? Guess what? No, no, no. Mom says you don't have your birthday today. OK. Anybody uh, too else? Too bad. Otherwise, you would have had to sing happy birthday, because I can't play it. Anybody so else? Is, uh, no, no volunteers? OK. All right. OK. Thank you. Thank you. So you want to turn it off? Yep. Let's turn that off. OK, so that was Up along the lines of sound. But that was still a nice sound, right? And now we're going to make it a little bit louder. And where, you know, when you go and listen to really loud music, sometimes you can even feel the music, right? If it's really, really loud, and so what we're going to do is we turn it so loud that 
some object will feel this sound so bad that it st starts to go like this. And that's going to be a wine glass right here. And Josh is setting this up. It's a wine glass. And you'll, you'll be able to see all of that upstairs here on the video. That's right next to two big speakers that just scream at that wine glass in a minute. And this is going to be very, very loud and unpleasant. So that's why you have fingers. Stick them in your ears when, this, when he starts to play with it. Give us one second. You can take your ears out of your. So there you see the rim of the wine glass, and that's what you want to be looking at as, as uh, Josh starts hitting the snow. Okay? So this could be nasty loud. So you see, we, did, we did actually did a little bit better than just making it go like that. The poor wine glass, in fact, the poor wine glass, in fact, cracked, right, from all that sound. So now we're going to change pace a little bit and uh, look at uh, something having to do with liquids and uh, what happens with liquids. That was a little too much. And so this is a very special liquid. This is ethanol. And we're going to stick ethanol into this five gallon water container. And now we dance a little bit and we just let this thing coat the walls of this and start evaporating inside. And let's see what's going to happen to this if we continue. Now, uh, we need a chair, a stool. Uh, and uh, one of the things about this is that this uh, is a, a lesson to be careful. And so uh, there's a wonderful YouTube video of, uh, uh, that was taken at a gas station. Uh, uh, and it showed someone pumping gas. They got out of their car. They put the, uh, the gas pump into their, uh, into their car. And then uh, they went back in, it was the middle of winter, and they went back in and got something, and they stayed there for a bit. And then when they got out, you could see that they uh, you know, had to readjust their clothes a little bit because it was a little clingy. And then what they did um, uh, after that was they made the mistake of then touching the gas handle. And what happened then was the whole thing burst into flames. Now, the person got out of the way very easily, but the car didn't. And so it was a very informative video saying that you should be very careful with flammable liquids 
such as ethanol or gasoline, and anything that would have a spark or a flame. So uh, we need the, uh, the uh, I need the. Uh, Sid is looking for a lighter. The, li the lighter, here we go. Remember, we've got to be really careful with sparks. So we're going to use a spark now. And we're going to use a spark. And I, there's no liquid in here. It's not the liquid that's doing it. It's whatever was left behind from this liquid. Yeah. And so um, I'm going to take this. And are we ready? Yes. So I'm now going to. So that's what happens if you're not careful. Well, if you're even less careful, even worse things happen. But uh, that's what you get uh, in this. Uh, so that was pretty good, wasn't it? So that was when it was like this, right? What if we turn the bottle to the side now and try that again, OK? So let me get the liquid out here. And now we're going to turn the bottle on its side. And I'm doing the same thing over. Let's see what happens. <laughs> All right. OK. It, it's still on fire, by the way. <laughs> yep, it's still on fire. Don't. Uh, I, I wouldn't uh, <laughs> blow on it. Okay, so, oh, and uh, so what you should see now is uh, uh, watching that, the, what happened to that uh, can as the, the flame went into it. And so uh, here it goes being played back in slow motion. There it goes. And so here we have a, another uh, a demonstration with liquids. It's a pretty simple demonstration. You've probably seen a lot of this before. A, this is just a liquid, and this is just a rod that I'm sticking into this liquid. And uh, what you, you should see is that this rod looks like something very funny happened to it as I stick it into the liquid, right? That is, it looks straight if it's outside. It's a really a straight rod. I stick it into the liquid, and it looks like it's bent. And so this is because of this very simple thing that a liquid has something called uh, index of refraction. Air has this thing called index of refraction. And index of refraction tells you something about how light moves in that medium. And it moves differently in the liquid than it does out in the air. And so you see something different as you go through that interface of the, the liquid and the, uh, and the air. And so what happens is this thing looks bent. And so it's a very kind of nice effect. And so when you take this out, then, you know, uh, well, this is kind of a boring experiment because there's nothing in here. And so uh, I guess there's nothing in here, but let's see. Oh, uh, I guess there was something in here all along, I guess. Uh, but now, now it must be empty, right? Because I took this out. Okay, so that's empty. Uh, well, let's see. Oh, I guess there's more stuff in here. Look at and that. even more stuff in here. So there's a <laughs> lot of stuff in here, and you couldn't see it. And why couldn't you see it? It's because of this same thing that I just told you about before, that index of refraction which was now it was the same between this liquid and this uh, glass. Oh. And so because they were exactly the same, or very close to the same, you could hardly see the difference at all. If you look very carefully, you could have seen it, but it's almost invisible. And so this is a very magic liquid. This liquid is what you cook with, Wesson oil. Just Wesson oil, your ordinary uh, 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 cooking oil. And this is 
just the ordinary glass with which you cook, Pyrex. And it just turns out that Pyrex and Western oil have nearly the same index of refraction, so you can hardly see uh, when one is hidden with inside the other. The only trouble with this experiment is that you need a helper uh, uh, with this because it is rather, uh, 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 rather a mess. <laughs> uh, thank you. You need two helpers, two, two I mean, helpers. Uh, 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 to do this. You can do it at home, but uh, uh, try not to get it all over the floor. Uh, which is, uh, uh. Okay, so that was one um, uh, fluid. I want to uh, show you another thing that fluids can do. And so again, this is something that you probably uh, you know, know, is that if you have a fluid and you stir it up, things get mixed. And if things get mixed, you can never unmix them. You can't bring them back t together again because, you know, how do you get things to go back together after they've been broken apart? But we're physicists, and so we have special powers, and so I'm going to try and reverse time in this experiment. So I have to tell you what this experiment is. I have here an inner cylinder that's white, and I'm just turning that inner cylinder now. And outside, there's another cylinder on the outside of this, which is uh, stationary. So I turn this, and the inner cylinder turns with respect to the outer cylinder. And in between the two cylinders, I have a liquid. It's a, another uh, liquid, and you can't see it because it's transparent. But what I'm going to do is try to make it visible to you by putting some ink in this thing. And so I'm going to try to put some ink in the middle of this, um, in, in between these two uh, cylinder walls. And let's see. So, uh, so I made an S for science, right? So this is science. And so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stir this up. And if I stir it up, then it's mixed, right? And uh, so we'll see this. So I'm going to go here. It goes. One, Mixed. pretty much gone. So let's keep going. Two, three, four turns, five turns. So now I told you that I am uh, have special powers, so I'm going to keep turning. One, two, Three, four, five. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, just so you know, I did not do any magic for you. And those of you who were very observant saw that I rolled it up in one direction first. That was the first five turns. The second five turns I did in the opposite direction. So I was undoing what I just did. And this is uh, a demonstration of a theorem in fluid mechanics, which under certain circumstances, you can get things to be totally reproducible and reversible. And you just have to make sure that the equipment is designed precisely right in order to show that effect. And so that's what this is done. So that was a really nice demonstration with a liquid, as Sid said, I guess, that, that is not your ordinary liquid. So it's, it's a thicker liquid. It's glycerol. And so we're going back now to something really ordinary, which is your favorite liquid, water. And it's in a little balloon right here. And we're going to just see what happens when you pop a water balloon. And of course you know what happens. I get wet. <laughs> but we want to see that in slow motion. Camera crew, are you ready? OK, so I'll pop this now. Ugh. Good job, Heinrich. Thank you. But now let's see what happens if they play it back in slow motion.
again, you saw the uh, balloon. Oh, there, what's in there? That. <laughs> All right. So, what do you have here, Heinrich? Milk? Yep, yep, I guess we got some milk here. Look at that. This is just ordinary milk, right? Yeah. What's it going to do with the milk? It's going to step in it. Should I, should I step in the milk? Really? Okay. See, it's a liquid, right? Okay. So what are you going to do with it? Do you think I can walk over the liquid? Walk over the liquid? That's uh, kind of bizarre. But that would why, be bizarre. Why don't you run across it? Let's see if you can do it. Can you jump in it? Oh my God. Okay. Can I jump in it? I can. Uh -oh. It's a liquid and I sink in right now. Now you sunk. Am I sunk? I don't know. Can you move? I think come I'm sunk. Come on, get, come on. Oh, you are sunk. Uh, man. Uh, what a crazy liquid this is. Look at this. Uh, what kind of liquid was that? So actually, that was a liquid you all have in your kitchen. It's water and cornstarch. And it behaves in this wonderfully non-intuitive way that it turns into a solid when you step on it, right? So let's see what else we can do with that. Sid, what should we do with it? Well, why don't you see what you can drop into it? Should we drop something into it? Look, everyone, we got another vat of this stuff here. We have volunteers right here, the first two rows. Now you're going to get all soaked, right? So be careful for this. Here it comes. I'm thinking we should just drop something from, from about here, don't you think? Higher. Higher? Perfect. All right, all right. But what should we drop? No, really? Let's start slow. Let's drop something fragile, something that could break. An egg. How about an egg? Whoa, good. So if I take that egg and throw, it would just break, right? What if I drop the egg right on the floor? It would break, right? What if it dropped the egg now in the liquid? What would happen? Nothing. Nothing? Let's see. Nothing. Well, it looks like it's still whole, but you believe maybe he hard boiled it. You yeah. Hard -boiled. He probably hard boiled. Well, can I get a volunteer to help me check it with this? Come on down, help me uh, volunteer here with this. Come on, come on over here, and we will check to see whether this egg was really hard boiled or whether it's a raw egg. So what I want you to help me do is smash it against the wall. Can you help me just smash it, just so it lands in here? Yeah, just ooh. Good so that job. was really a raw egg. Okay. Thank you very much. Let's give him a hand. All right, should we drop another egg from a little higher? I'm afraid of heights. I, this thing is. is we, okay. So now, now. What, what else can we drop? A bowling ball. Oh my goodness.
So are you ready in that front row? This is really dangerous, especially for the bowling ball. Now, if I drop this into milk, right, you know what happens. It splashes everywhere, and these guys, they get wet, right? So let's see what happens if we splash it into this thing. Are you ready? Yeah. OK. Three, two, one. Thank you, Sid. Okay. Oh, uh, right. Well, that's what happens. I should have. Okay. So that was liquids, right? But uh, liquids and fluids, liquids are still fluids, and another fluid is gas. So you, you're in here right now in this room, full of gas, air, and you know that it has to be air because we breathe that. And you know you can feel air if I use this as a drum, right? You feel that? You feel that. But can you see it? No. Okay, so maybe if we put something in here that you could see, then you can see what's really happening. Okay, so we just put some fog in here. Okay. So, that was air. And we all know air, right? Except maybe you didn't know these beautiful rings that also form in air. But now we're going to go to a different gas that's being wheeled in here. And we'll try something just wonderful. And for that, we need another volunteer. I, you pick. I pick. But we picked over there, right? We need to pick somebody. Why don't you come over here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, the girl in green. Hi. What's your name? Penelope. Penelope. Thank you, Penelope, for helping. So what we want you to do is to make sure that we're not cheating. That's the main thing that you're supposed to do. So what we know is that you know, uh, boats can float on water, but this is a boat. And we want to make this, it says it's a boat, so it's got to be a boat. It's a boat that we want to see if this boat can float on air. Well, now that seems ridiculous, because I just drop it and it just drops. But so we want to know if we can make it float on a different kind of air. And so what we're going to put in here, we're going to turn this on, and I'm putting in a different kind of gas into this container. And what I want you to make sure is that we're not sneakily putting in liquid, okay? Is there any liquid coming in here? 
No liquid coming in there at all. Have right? we got, so got to look really carefully? Yeah, no so no, no fish no, in there, no nothing? No fish, nothing. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so let's just make sure this thing gets really nicely filled up with this non-liquid and see what happens. Can we get this thing to... Uh, to float, okay? Can we float the boat? What do you think? You think so? Okay. Okay, so let's try it. So are we ready? So I'm going to turn off this gas, and Heinrich is going to help me very carefully remove this top. And you see there's nothing in here, no liquid, right, Penelope? And now I'm going to carefully put this down and see whether I can get the thing to float. <laughs> and so now I'm going to try and sink this boat. There it goes. So, thank you, Penelope. That was very good help. Thank you. What kind of gas is that? Special. We'll tell you afterwards. Okay, so now it's time for Heinrich to risk his life. So are you ready for Heinrich to risk his life? This is dangerous. So he is going to try and do this incredible feat of using a fire extinguisher to make himself move. And it's going to be rather noisy, okay? This is going to be really quiet now. And that's why you want to put your ears and your fingers. And especially my good friends in the first two rows, right about there, you want to be ready. Good idea. Yeah. Make sure you see it, but okay. Are you all ready? You ready? Okay. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, so now we're going to do something else with mechanics. So this is a bowling ball hanging from the ceiling on a steel string. And so this is just a, a pendulum going back and forth. And so one of the things is what you hope is that if you start off at some height here, this is not going to come back to a higher height than you started. It will go all the way over to this side, slow down, and then come back to this side and slow down. And so we'll go back and forth like this over and over again. And so we think that if you start off at a certain height here, for example, right in front of this egg on the wall, that if, if, if we let this thing move down, it will come back and nothing will happen to the egg, right? So this is the idea. Oh my goodness, that was, uh, that was a mistake. So, well, eggs are precious, but we really have to demonstrate, so I'm going to use my nose instead. Okay, so uh, here I'm going to put my head against the wall so I cannot move my head out of the way. I'm going to put this up against my nose, and now I'm going to let this thing go and see what happens. Are you sure? Uh, should I not be, uh, should I do it? Uh-oh, uh-oh. Well, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. One, two, three. 
So, for those of you who are observant and saw what I did, just so you know uh, that, again, no tricks. We reveal everything here. When I did it with the egg, I gave it a little extra push. And that's why I came back and smashed the egg on the way back. But when I did it with my nose, even though we can, I could use a new nose, uh, uh, this uh, one, I did, made sure I did not give it any extra push. I just let it go, so it came back and would not come up uh, and hit my me in the mouth. And so here is uh, one other uh, mechanics uh, thing. It's a very special chain where this chain really, really, really hates to be in this container. I mean, it just does not want to be in this container at all. And I'm going to show you that just because I'm just going to let this, I'm, I'm having to hold this in so it doesn't come out. Okay, so here we go. I put it down and so I'll go out like this. Wow. All right, so it's um, time to switch over to something a little bit more electric. And um, I think that's what we're going to do. So I'm dimming the lights a little bit. OK. And um, let's see what we can do right here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see if that can work. I guess it cannot make a spark quite yet. So we will try it one more time. So, oh, you like sparks? Yeah. All right. Then let's move to more sparks. Okay, so this is a different kind of spark maker. This is called the Van de Graaff generator. And so uh, it's just a piece of plastic that goes round and round this tube, but it's going to come up to very high spark making capacity. Okay, so you turn this on. So let's, you can turn down the uh, light so you can see uh, so you can see these sparks coming. Let me, uh. And there's something very special about being a physicist. I can just point at this thing, and it stops sparking. I point away; it sparks again. Point, spark, no spark, spark. OK, so I have this great power. Just by pointing at something, I can make it either not spark or let it spark. OK, so this is just this thing uh, going along. And what else can we do with this? Uh, Oh, well, we should do something more interesting. We should do something a little bit different. And so what I want to show you is that now I've got nothing up my sleeve, no electrical wires. This is just a light bulb, or otherwise known as a lightsaber. And uh, I'm going to bring this uh, close to this uh, sparking machine when Heinz turns it on, OK? Nothing up my sleeve. Okay, so may the force be with you.
OK, so now comes the time that I dread each lecture. Uh, I have to do something. Uh, you may notice that I took my glasses off because uh, once I did this with my glasses on, and I got sparks between my glasses and my eyeballs, and that was uh, distressing. <laughs> so uh, I. Okay, so I think I'm ready. Are you Please ready? Speed me up. Okay. Beautiful. Let's change the haircut a little bit. Up, oh, there, a little bit more, and now you're back. I'm down. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so we'll, we'll stick with uh, the theme of currents. Actually, now what you just saw, the sparks, was very high voltage but low currents. And now this is getting very dangerous now. Now we're using very high voltage, let's see, high voltage and very high currents. And we're going to try to cut a beverage can, a little aluminum can, in half okay. just with high voltage and high current. In fact, we use that here. We charge with the power supply, this big box. We charge a capacitor. And then we discharge the capacitor. You'll see it flash in a few minutes. And that unleashes this enormous amount of current through a little coil that's right here in the center of the can. And the can is just stuck underneath this coil. So the coil is inside this little piece of wood. And what we hope will happen is that the current flowing through that coil will generate a field that is strong enough to rip that can apart, just like that. But we want to film that with very fast cameras so you get to see it, hopefully, in slow motion. Then. OK, so uh, are you ready, Hunter? Well, I'm going to put this on just in case, you know. Okay. Um, I pull the switch. I open the switch. Okay, so I'm going to turn it on. Okay, we're going to go up to 5,500 volts. 1,000. Two thousand. Three thousand. Four thousand. Five thousand. Five thousand five hundred volts. All right, it's the limit of the capacitor. We're pushing things. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, so that's going to be a flash of light and a loud pop. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, three, two, one, hello. <laughs> Look what it did to this can. It's just a total mess. It crinkled it, it ripped it apart, it stuck it in the center, it tried to get out of the way as much as possible. Okay, so that's what currents can do when you uh, put a lot of it through a very small area. All right, so now you probably only saw the flash and you heard the noise. So let's see if we can play that back for you. Uh, Andre and Nicole have it lined up.
Okay, here we are. Flash. Poof. Nicole, how many frames was that per second? 4,700 4, frames a second, so fairly nice high speed. Thank you, guys. All right, what's this? Copper tube. Could you please look through that? Is there anything in it? Is it hollow? Thank you. So it's copper, right? Copper is just a metal. Now, if I took something and dropped it through the copper pipe, it would just come right out, right? Wouldn't it? So let's take a quarter, and I put it, put it right here, and I drop it. You heard that? And went right through. So. Of course, that's expected. Now let me take an even bigger piece of metal and drop it right through. And uh, th this is just metal, right? Two pieces of metal. So I drop that in there now. Now I tell you one thing. It's not just an ordinary metal. This is a magnet, right? But copper is not magnetic, so they don't stick to each other. So I drop it in. And for those of you in the front, I have a little nice thing here for you. It's that green stripe. So that's actually a magnetic field indicator. So while this thing is in there, you will be able to see kind of where it is by looking at a little yellowish part of this, okay? So I drop it in now. Let's see, falls right through, okay? Well, what the heck? Can you see it? It's still not. There it is. So what happens is this, kind of similar to the force we just saw with the current. What happens is when a magnet moves, it generates a, a current, and the current runs around in this pipe, and that current in that pipe then generates a field which opposes this, and so the two, they bite each other in the tail, so to speak, and it prevents, wants to prevent this thing from falling. It could prevent it from falling if it was really 100% efficient, but this is just copper. That copper is a conductor, but it's just a so-so conductor. What do we need? We need a, a superconductor. All right, so we try the same thing now with a superconductor, which will then prevent this thing from falling, right? So what I have here is a, a piece of superconductor, and I have here liquid nitrogen. So this is the air around you. It's just so cold that it's turned into a liquid. So you can watch it. It's, it's really neat. You can. They don't like me to put it on the floor, but I'm doing it. Uh, and so it, it, you can watch this stuff go all over the place. It's really neat when it, when it uh, goes like that. And so I poured some in here, and now I have the superconductor sitting in here, and this is a row of magnets going around here. And so what I'm going to take this superconductor, and I'm going to stick it down on the top of this uh, row of magnets. And now I get this thing to go around and around in a circle. And it's sticking right above these magnets. It's above the thing. It's not touching. It goes right above that sheet of paper without touching it at all. And so it's actually hanging in place. It's levitated above this thing. And how much can you really levitate this thing? So uh, what we want to do is try to see if we can take this See, so this really holds on now, unlike the magnet in my copper tube. Oops, it's, there it is. It's having a, you're gonna, uh, yeah, let's put it down one more time. So let's, uh, I'm gonna put it on upside down. And we give it another little temperature shock here. So th th this is a superconductor, not at room temperature. That's why we need to cool it down, right? So that's why it's in this really ultra cold liquid. So let's move it back on here. Uh, 
Okay, so let's see if we can turn this thing upside down now. Oh, okay, we can do it sideways. Let's see if we can. Upside down, <laughs> hanging from this thing. So these are going to be the trains of the future. You're going to have levitated tracks of this superconducting material that's able to keep you off the track. You don't have any friction with the track. And the track can hang from the ceiling. It can hang around the side of a building. It can hang on the floor. And you can levitate in all these different positions. Okay, and so this is how we're going to uh, eventually be going by train travel. With one little caveat, we still have to keep this thing cold, right? That's the one thing. All right, so uh, back to air. You all are under tremendous pressure, right? Work, life. In fact, you are under 15 pounds per square inch, 100 kilopascals of pressure just right now from the atmosphere. And the reason that doesn't do anything to you and me is that we have equal pressure from the inside balancing this out. But what if I take something, let's say this beautiful steel drum here, and I just take the air out on the inside, then all that's left is the pressure from the outside, right? So let's try that. So that's uh, 15 pounds per square inch. But it's a good oil drum too, right? This is reinforced, this thing is uh, somewhat sturdy. No, nothing more is going to happen to it, Heinrich. So it's probably going to just sit there for a while. That's the pressure you're under, kind of. So this is a pump. This red thing is a hose that sucks out the air from the inside. And all we're dealing with is letting the outside air just push on that. Right? Well, I think we should just start up something else. You yeah, know, there's I nothing think happening. Nothing's going to happen there. So we'll just continue with something else. So this is the same idea. That is, we have a transparent, long plastic tube, the cylinder. and. Uh, Oh. What we have is. Oh! Something did happen. Okay. And so now at this point, you know, the, the steel is touching and so it will crumble more. But uh, you, you get the idea, right? So that's, that's pressure. That's just atmospheric pressure. So we're going to play with atmospheric pressure again here. This long, hollow cylinder, plastic, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pull a vacuum on it. And so the inside will be at very low pressure. The outside is still at the same pressure as it was before, 15 pounds per square inch. The one thing that we've done with this is at the front and at the back, we've closed the pipe off with just a little bit of aluminum foil. So it's the same kind of aluminum foil you would have at home. And so when we pump on this, we're going to get this big vacuum inside, very low vacuum. And at the end of this, we have a ping pong ball. See this orange thing here? That's just a ping pong ball. And what we're going to try to do is, once we've got this down to pressure, uh, Heinrich is going to slam that thing and break the seal of the aluminum foil and see what happens to that ping pong ball as it travels up to this end of the sun. Now, of course, a ping pong ball isn't much. I mean, it doesn't do much. You can't do much with it. I mean, you don't think ping pong balls can really do much damage. And so what we're going to try to do 
is, yeah, that's, that's all it is, just a ping pong ball. We're going to try and see if you can have that ping pong ball puncture this piece of uh, foam board. So is one sheet of foam board enough? No. No? Yeah. You mean I should have more than one sheet? Yes. Yeah. OK, so let's try more than one sheet. OK, so now I've got two sheets of foam board. Is two sheets of foam board enough? No. Yeah. No? More? OK, so we'll have three sheets of foam board. OK, so this is what we're going to do. We're uh, <laughs> going to try to do it with three. See what it will do to three sheets of foam board. And uh, so uh, we're going to try and film this also. So uh, I, I'll tell you when, when you need to put your hands <laughs> over your ears. Not right now. It's OK. Okay, the one thing we should maybe really point out is it's the same pressure we're using, the atmospheric pressure, and here it crumbled a steel uh, pan, but the geometry of this vessel here, this tube, is such that actually it resists any crumbling. So we checked that, right? The amount of surface is much smaller and the walls are thicker where it counts. And at the very end where the walls are really thin, the area is tiny, so the aluminum foil can actually with that pressure. Are we ready here? I'm ready. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Okay, so then you want to get your fingers close to your ears now. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Twenty-five, twenty-seven, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one. Okay, Heinrich, let her go. Okay, ready? <laughs> no more ping pong ball. Right now, we, we will try to play that back. All right, so how many frames was that, Nicole? Uh, 19,047. So that was really fast video. In case you didn't hear that right now, Nicole says it was almost 19,500 frames per second. So that, that's what you need in order to capture that because this ball goes almost with the speed of sound by the time it gets out of the other end.
All right, we have some very interesting stuff for you now coming up. In fact, um, Sid, right? It's time to have a drink. Yeah, I don't know about you, but it's been a long and hot day, and I think it's time for something cool and refreshing. And so that's what I want. I want a cool and refreshing drink. And what could be more cool and refreshing than liquid nitrogen? So that's what uh, we're going to do. As I, I'm going to ask Heinrich to fill this bottle with liquid nitrogen and see what happens. OK, so let me uh, get this together. Okay, is that enough? No, okay, so I guess they want more. No, okay, I think some more. Just a little bit more. Just a, li just a, just a little bit more. Are you sure? Yeah, I mean, how much refreshing can I get in a day? All right. OK, so now I'm going to put the top on this bottle. And Heinrich is going to fill, put the. And now we just wait. I don't know what's going to happen. What do you think is going to happen? <laughs> Go for that, man. Yeah, that was. Bring him back. Sorry, we're gonna play this now. This was too good. This was it. The keeper. We gotta play this. We're glad the chair of the department was not here for this one. <laughs> Put him back. <laughs> lights on. Okay, guys. So I think it, now is the time for us to say goodbye. And until next year, we hope you'll all come back next year. Yep. But right now, I think it's a time for us to disappear. That's right. Okay. Goodbye. What? What?
Okay. <laughs> All right. So thank you all for coming. Uh, we also want to thank several people who made this whole thing possible. So two people we want to thank in particular is Josh Ernst. And Dan Bistro. Our camera crew, Nicole James, Andre Latka. The people who put together are, uh, the, the whole day is Justin Driller, David Schuster, and Eileen Chu. Are any of them here? No, they're working still. So we thank them. Ryder Ramachandran, The Demo Alley by Pete Dahlberg and Kirk McPherson. And then the uh, people who uh, put all of the video and audio together, Steve Bandick, Warden Friedel, and Freddie Peralta. Yeah. And finally, we wouldn't have been able to do any of this without funding from the JFI, the Physics Department, the MERSEC, and the Vice President for Research. So thank you all very much. We hope to see you next year. Now, if you want to see more scientists in their natural habitat, please go right outside. There are tours you can Visit up to 16 labs, get liquid nitrogen ice cream, whatever. All these wonderful things, they're right out there for you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.